All right, good evening and welcome to this 16th day of the month, a month where politicians can no longer politic in charge. Or is it just the mainstream churches? Some have called it a bold move by the church, but some still question the decision. Tonight we have spiritual leaders and you get the chance to question them as well. Meanwhile, Catholic bishops have offered to mediate between President Uru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto, whose relationship has strained the Jubilee government. But is it too late, even as the DP welcomes the call for unity? We ask you, do you think the president will agree to reconcile with his deputy? Do you think the president will agree to reconcile with his deputy? Share your views on our WhatsApp number. That is on 0785-939529. Once again, that is on 0785-939529. Or at Fred Mwitiriri at Switch TV Kenya. That is on Twitter. My name is Frederick Mwitiriri and this is Tipping Point. We call upon the president and the deputy president to seek ways of reconciling. Maskofu wamesema wanataka kuniweka pamoja na rais. Mimi niko asubuhi na mapema bila condition. Postponing the elections will only heighten political tension. Nimepiga marufuku wanasiasa kuzungumza ndani ya kanisa Anglikana. Sisi viongozi wa dini pia tusimameni msimamo mmoja msimamo mzuri kwamba siasa zifanywe ndani ya makanisa wale ndani ya msikiti. Do not make political leaders look like they are they, they, they are sinners. Kuna wale viongozi wa kanisa wengine e, mambo yao ni pesa. Sisi kuendeleza siasa katika kanisani sio jambo zuri kwa sababu kanisa ni pali patakatifu. I, I can promise you we are going to have quite a show. To have this discussion, we bring you the church to you. We have Bishop Dr. Kefa Omai of the Redeemed Gospel Church, Pastor Peter Nyaga from Nairobi Central SDA, and Pastor Nathan Kiama from the Great Light Center, Langata. And finally, we are joined by political analyst and governance expert, Gabriel Mothuma. My two sign language interpreters are Michael Maithia and Teresia Washira. But first, Let's hear what Deputy President William Ruto had to say on reconciliation talks. Mimi niko tayari. Hawa maaskofu wamesema wanataka kuniweka pamoja na rais. Mimi niko asubuhi na mapema bila condition. Kwa sababu mimi na muheshimu rais yeye ni mdosi wangu. Lakini mimi niko ready. Without condition any moment kwa sababu tulichaguliwa pamoja na wakenya. All right, you've heard him, the DP of the Republic of Kenya. Do you think the President Uru Kenyatta will agree to reconcile with his deputy William Ruto? Talk to us. And now I'm joined by these great men and men of God and, of course, Gabriel Motoma. And I'll start with you, Gabriel. Yes. You've heard what the deputy president has just said. Totally. And uh, you saw and you have seen over the last four years what we have experienced between the president and his deputy. Where do you think the rain started beating the two? Well, Fred, thanks for having us. And two things I'll start uh, this evening. One, um, we all agree that there are things that have happened over the past four years, if we are to be you know, truthful about this issue. Yeah. Uh, before you know, 2013 coming all the way to 2017, you, know, we, you had two good friends. You remember the marching time yes. and what have you. Uh, so uh, you know, that faded with time. And yes. then uh, what we have is now the cold uh, kind of uh, situation that we are seeing. It was just the other day when the president was in Mombasa and mm. a journalist asked mm. him what happened. And, you know, he he didn't come out uh, he clearly didn't have to say an this is... Yeah. And so that, it, 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 it goes on to tell me that, yes, um, I'm glad you've had a voice that seeking, is seeking to reconcile the two. Mm. That's the first thing. The second one uh, is, uh, you know, many people, <laughs> you know, all the time they look at the president and it's easy to point your fingers uh, to the president. But uh, you have to realize uh, the kind of work that he has behind him or on his shoulders. And uh, he is a symbol of national unity according to our constitution. Mm. That means that the first thing that he must be able to attend to is ensuring that the country has great cohesiveness, yes. has peace, yes. and he has to project that notion of peace. Mm. So called upon, I think, Fred, every self-respecting Kenyan would actually welcome that move. And it's not only when 
we are talking about, you know, uh, when the president or when the deputy president said he'll be ready. At the end of the day, the president is still his boss, and I'm glad he acknowledges it. Mm. So if the president was to call, even if it's on any other matter, I think the deputy president will be humble enough to run and seek. Mm. On these alone, I think it is, like I told you, any self-respecting, any peaceful loving Kenyan would actually say, yeah, I mean, we voted or we elected for those who elected the, ju the, the candidates in the yes. jubilee ticket would yes. say, you know, we elected the two of you. So kindly sit, sit down, both of you, and show us the direction. Mm. And I think this is the most opportune time that they have. Will he, as a president, as a symbol of national unity, agree? will he rise to the occasion? Fred, me and you are waiting eagerly to see, that. To see whether that happens. Pastor Nyaga. Yes, yes Karibu sana to our studios. Thank you, thank you so much. We normally have politicians here, <laughs> so we hope you are going to pray over this place. <laughs> the good thing you put him in the middle, so yes. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Yeah, it's okay. Now, um, the Catholic Church yesterday intimated that uh, they are ready to reconcile the two. How hard or how easy is it for the church to bring the two together? Well, I, I would say um, it, it's not hard. Uh, because uh, you know this is a mandate of the church uh, to, to to reconcile. Uh, we, uh, as 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 clergy and as the church, uh, even the scriptures uh, exist to bring people together. Uh, and so uh, God has blessed the clergy uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to ventilate through issues. Uh, and there's nothing too difficult, uh, you know, before the Lord. So uh, the only stumbling block would be the president and the deputy president. Because these are the people who are holding, you know, the key to as whether the, the clergy are going to succeed or not. And, and I think I joined the, the call uh, to the two that they may really, you know, bat the hatchet and come together mm. for the sake of the nation. Mm. Yes. yes. And now, Pastor Nathan. Yes. Uh, Pastor Nathan is very diplomatic with this issue. Mm -hmm. But we know how things have been between the two leaders. Are we going to see these two coming together anytime soon? Is it possible? Uh, the approach I'd give is that um, I'll take us to back to the Bible. Mm. Scripture says in Matthew, I uh, think 5, mm. verse 13, mm. it says you're the salt of the earth. And um, when you go down there, the Bible say, nor do your light, uh, nor do they light a lamp and put it under the basket. This is what happened to the church. We are not going to relent. What we are doing is that we are praying, but at the same time, that's why the Catholic came in. They had to say it out. They had to speak it out because we have been praying in the secret place. Pastor can maybe uh, give an attest to that. As a church, we have been doing it. We have been praying. But then again, we have to go ahead, speak to them. As the Bible says, you are the salt of the earth. We have mm -hmm. to be felt. We have to show the government, ah, look at this. You may have gone this way, but still things can come can work out. Because right. why? Mm -hmm. What happens is when I give you an opportunity, Scripture says I give you leaders after you own it. And this is what happens, that everybody that is in the church, it is time to shine. And how do you shine? By lighting out the word. By lighting out the word of God that you've been given. So as clergy, what you're doing is that we are calling them forth, of course. It may be looking like it's very difficult, but I can tell you, I remember when they got to office, the place that they went to the church, they were prayed for. Men of God laid hands on them. And I can tell you maybe that is why they are being called back because they were at the altar somewhere and they were prayed over. When we, they are doing the swearing in, maybe my brother can attest to that, they, they swear in and they use the name of God. So mm. what do you tell us? Kenya is a nation that belongs to God. Mm. And at the end of the day, we have to see that coming into being. All right, um, uh, Director, do we have uh, Bishop Kefa Omai? You told me we had him. Do we have him? All right, Bishop, uh, karibu sana to our show. Uh, Daktari, muna kibarua kigumu sana kuwaleta pamoja viongozi wawili ambao mekua ki zozana kwa mde sasa. Kuna, kuna light anywhere in the, in the coming few days. Are we going to see our leaders coming together? as the Deputy President and the President of the Republic of Kenya? With uh, my brothers, and I've probably um, said something about the subject that we are discussing tonight. I think Kenyans have a short memory. 
in that uh, whenever we have had issues with this nation, the church, the church has played a key role. One, as an arbiter, and then number two, we have come in as Pastor Nathan has said, as the salt, just making sure that we direct, we guide, at the same time, we should our leaders in the right direction. When we had a challenge some time back, you realize the clutch played a key role in reconciling uh, President Uhuru and uh, uh, the Right Honorable Raira, uh, of the Orange, the police, but the church came in very strongly and played an arbiter role. And we did what we could by the grace of God, and we saw it work. Don't forget that the church prays. When believers pray, when a nation prays, when we go before God and plead for mercy and for intervention, God shows up and God takes over. So what we have seen before is the hand of God in this country. And it will be no different even at this time when we think that the president and his deputy cannot reconcile. You are going to be surprised. You are going to be shocked that they will come together yes. and they will provide in this nation okay. that shall become a testimony All right. and a blessing. Daktari, but where, Kenyans would ask, where have you been for the last four years? Where has the church been for the last four years? This, these two leaders and their lieutenants have been exchanging barbs here and there every single day. Where has the church been? I must say that's a wrong perception and I have to demystify that narrative. The clergy don't have to come before the camera now and again like politicians and issue statements. We stand on a pulpit uh, every Sunday, every Saturday on the day of worship, and we guide our congregations, we share the word of God, and we provide leadership. Uh, we need to understand that there is a place for, uh, you know, talks behind the curtains and behind the camera, not in front of the cameras. I can tell you the interfaith in this country, that is the Interfaith uh, Council of Kenya, together with the other uh, spiritual leaders in this country, drawn from different umbrella bodies, have been doing the work. I see the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya as a board member, and I can tell you there is so much that is going on All right. and has been going on. So I can assure yes. viewers and Kenyans at large, the clergy have been acting a critical role. And what you are about to see in the next coming days is an answer to what has been going on in our different forums, not in you, Bishop, of the I hear be, uh, that is coming. Bishop Dr. Kefa Omai of the Redeemed Gospel Church, and we'll be having him throughout this show. Gabriel, let me come back to you. How will it work, seeing that the deputy president, even in his own words today, I don't know if my director, you have that clip, where he says that there are people who came into the government and they made sure that the two cannot be able to speak. How is it going to work with Raila Odinga in the mix? We have William Ruto in the mix, and now we have the, uh, the president. How is it going to work? Fred, I think there's a solution in everything. Uh, but more than that, I think, uh, to answer your question, the deputy president has actually has been very categorical from day one. Mm. When he said, he, he, he's been always, always through and through very hesitant to the people who joined Jubilee later. And uh, many people would say he was not supportive of the handshake. Uh, that one, we do not know for sure. Oh, oh, hold still, I'm being told this that bite so that they can get the, the context. Please, Director Nicheze here, Tafadhali. Kuna watu tu wakora wamekuja hapo wakaweka fitina mingi. Mbaka wakasemekana huyu deputy president uweke kando. Sijui nini, sijui nini. Lakini mimi niko ready. Wale wengine ambao wamelete fitina, wangoje tuende kwa uchaguzi. Eh, wezi kuja kutoea serikali ambayo wewe ukuunda. Ama namna gani? Si waenda watafute? Vine tulienda kutafuta? 
Eh, na watatukuta huko tukitavuta pia. <laughs> Tell me. Yes. How uh, are these people going to reconcile? You see, uh, like, like I'm telling you, the deputy president has actually maintained this through and through and he said, you know what? We invited these people yes. and we knew they were going to mess up <laughs> yes. this government. They have a history of messing up coalitions, yes. they have a history. So, I mean, he's kept to that part of his side. Now, we also have to be very alive to this fact, Fred, that mm. even uh, even 2007, uh, we had a very, you know, segregated country. Mm. And if the president today, back then, saw the need to reach out and took to have a political relationship with Dr. William Ruto, I honestly believe it can be done this time around. And, you know, they say there are no politics in, there are no enemies in politics. Mm. So, you know, this is, this is, it's something I've always taken with a very, you know, with a slight, you know, pinch of salt. Sometimes, yes, we may not really talk about enmity, but there's that bad blood that continues. Yes, you may, okay, yeah, this happens, but you really do not forget. Not like our good Clive here will say, you know, once we forgive, you forget, and we you will open pray. a new chapter. Yes, and you move along. There are those in politics that will say, you know what, I will never forget. You did this to me. But, you know, we can, right now, we can, we can probably clean the slate, but I will never forget. So I think there, are, there is that element of, did I not tell you, if mm. these people joined our coalition, have we not seen what they are able to do? So I still think they, these, two, these are two different things, Fred. There's the forgiveness and there's the moving forward politically, mm. which probably at this point we would kind of divorce the two. Because mm. what we need is to have... Uh, and the, if, if we hear right from what the Catholic bishops are talking about, is to bring these gentlemen together the way they started so they can be cohesion towards 2022. They do not want, and most Kenyans, I believe, who are peace-loving, mm. they would not want us to get to a point where we are so segregated that even to go back to bring our individual ethnicities together becomes a problem mm. that this is going to be used and, and this is the problem with politics of of not forgetting and, and fred i cannot okay, i cannot hold, talk about hold, it hold, hold that thought you know? hold that thought yes, yes, yes. Yes. gabriel he he he's not coming out but he's saying it will be a difficult <laughs> mountain to climb mm. are you seeing the same possibility and, and and i'll still ask you the same question i asked bishop uh, kefa where has the church been for four years? Yes, you've been praying. Yes. <laughs> Why now? Why now? Towards the very end of their term. I, I think Bishop answered this. Uh, but uh, just to end on what he said, um, from our spiritual side, our point of view, uh, there is always a fullness of time. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the Bible recognizes, you know, when you go to the book of Daniel, uh, those who read the Bible, chapter 9, Daniel is, is praying for about 21 days and, and no answer is coming through yes. uh, until at the end of the, you know, the 21st day, then the angel comes to attend to him and tells him, when you start praying, is actually when God hands you and, and answers your prayer, mm. but something has been keeping us away from coming to let you know. The church has been actively involved in this, you know, conflict. Between Action or in prayer? I, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that, mm. um, um, you know, between the president and, and the deputy president, mm. because as a people, as a pastor, I have both people who subscribe to the president ideologies mm. and the deputy president ideologies. I, 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 I'm not comfortable, you know, in my congregation when I know the president and the deputy president are not reading from the same script. It affects me directly as a minister. Mm. And I can tell you for sure, the church has made steps to talk to the president, to talk to the deputy president. But of course- What we have, have, they, have, have they been saying? I'd want to hear. You, you see, um, we because don't have to I, 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 I heard mm. uh, Bishop uh, Oginde from Sitam saying mm. they've been having those meetings. Yes, yes. I've, I've seen him saying that. What are the two saying? What are they saying? Mm. Um, uh, well, um, I, I think I even up to now, uh, you, you heard even from the bishops and uh, the Catholic bishops. Yes. Um, it's not yet very clear Really what happened between yes. the president and the deputy. Let's, he, let's hear the president. This is what the president had to say, what happened between the two of them. 
I, I, I have no idea what has transpired, except for the fact that probably he is trying to create a base for him and for his future politics, which is his right. I have never denied him that, and he, he's free to do so. But I feel it is unfortunate that maybe the manner in which he is doing it, uh, by going against the same government that he's serving, I think is wrong. You don't confuse people, you know. You know, on the one hand, you want to sing the praises of a government that you are saying that, yes, you know, this is, we have done, we have done, we have done, and you want to ride on them. But yet on the other side of your mouth, you're talking another language. Pastor Nathan, mm -hmm. the, us in media, there's mm -hmm. what we call body language. We read body language. Mm -hmm. By what you're hearing, the voice of the president, he mm -hmm. sounds an angry president. Mm -hmm. Are these people in any way, now we have Raila Odinga in the picture, mm -hmm. are we going to see a reconciled country in 2022 general elections? Um, it's quite an interesting feature because I'd like to say this. Eh? We have to shift our, our eyes from looking at uh, the president as Uru Kenyatta. We must look at the office that he holds. And the thing is, if you bring them together, I can tell you, by the way, I'm so sure at my personal level, maybe these guys beat, they do whatever they can do. But the thing is, because there is a picture that has been painted out here, and I, I thank God for, for pastor what he's saying, that like as a pastor, as a church, we have played a big role, not just in prayer, but also outside here. We Faith prayed. without action. No, 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 no. You see, you see now, the thing with the media is that you have to sell this thing out. And the good thing is that because we have laws, we have the constitution, there are things that we're supposed to follow. I can tell you, if the church was not there, this nation would not be there. Sure. These guys, a big percentage of Kenyans, they come to church. I can tell you the work that the pastors have, it has really, really, really kept this country together. Mm. So the final bit that is happening right now, we are talking about the president coming together, the, all that, blah, 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 blah. I can tell you the fact that I can talk to you as a, my brother, it can still happen to them. And it can only happen to them if we show as Kenyans that we have a positive mind. Mm. Scripture says if we have the mind of Christ, then you operate under one oneness. Mm. And Kenya, this is what I say. Scripture says, uh, let uh, the, the glory of the Lord has shine upon you. Mm. And this is what happened because the light is here. We've already seen the light. Okay. And okay. Let, let, me, let me just finish. All right. I don't know why we should point like they cannot meet. They will meet. They have been talking off and in camera. I, I believe they have been talking. So this that is coming out here is for us to see that truly Kenya can stand. Mm. Truly, Kenya can do well. All right. It is just right. us also as leaders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. down to the MCAs. Yes. If the MCAs would do the right thing, then up there things will be well. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that we have Bishop Dr. Kefau Mai from the Redeemed Gospel Church. Mm -hmm. We have Pastor Peter Jaga from Nairobi Central SDA Church. Mm -hmm. Pastor Nathan Kiama from Great Light Center in Langata. And of course, we have Gabriel Mutuma who is a political analyst and a governance expert. Now we are taking a short commercial break. We'll be back with Bishop Kefa and we'll be discussing the hot topic of the month, politics in church. And this is what Deputy President William Ruto and Waipa leader Kalonzo Musioka had to say about the same. We will not make political leaders look like they are, they, they, they are sinners, top of the, of the range sinners. At the end of the day, we, there should, I think the bigger question, and I thank you, Switch TV, the bigger question is, is there really a separation between church and politics? In my view, there is... Mimi nakubaliana kabisa 100% na maaskofu na viongozi wa kanisa kusema tuendeni kanisani, tumuabudu mungu, tusipeleke mambo yetu ya siyasa kule kanisani. Do not make political leaders look like they're, 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 they're sinners, top of the, of the range sinners. At the end of the day, we, there should, I think the bigger question, and I thank you, Switch TV, the bigger question is, is there really a separation between church and politics? 
is there a separation between church and politics? But earlier on, I asked you, do you think President Uru Kenyatta will agree to reconcile with his deputy, William Ruto? Do you think the president will reconcile with his deputy, William Ruto? SK Kagima, you are saying, well, I would if we know what, why they part ways in the first place have they resolved or is it an idea to solve their differences that had nothing to do with peace but as it is clear the noon day it was selfishness the president this is moses joma the president has no personal difference with his deputy it's the handshake that separated them kiongozi from pipeline nakura sante mwangerik you're saying i think it's prudent for the president to swallow his pride why? And bury the hatchet with his deputy. All right. <laughs> this is what Muslim leaders had to say about the very same thing. Allah, who is to a promise for land for and bono to Misa to any in a Hazari in the Guzay to an assassin. When Hazari, Nasisi, and Gosva Dinipia to Simameni, Simamo, Moja, Simamo, Mzuri, Kamba Siasa, Zifanyo, and Dana Makanis, all under the mistake. Siasa is Zifanyo and Dana Makanisa. Bishop Dr. Kefa Omai from the Redeemed Gospel Church. Now, the mainstream churches, a majority of them, those that we've been able to see, have said that there is no politicking in church. And my question would be, can we separate the church and politics? Is it possible? Daktari, are you there with us? I'm seeing Daktari from my end. My director, Lynette. Do we have the, the, the Daktari? Not yet? All right. Uh, let me bring it to uh, Amerudi. Okay. San, san, san. Pole, usijali, ndiyo hali ya mitambo. Dr. Kefa, how can we, is it possible to separate the church and politics? Yeah, I, I think we need to be clear as to what it means, um, to separate the church and the state. When you look, we look at the Old Testament, looking at the scriptures, both in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, you will see kings did what the prophet said. Whenever kings wanted to make a decision concerning the land, they consulted prophets. So prophets gave direction. They guided kings on what needed to be done. Go to the Old Testament. For example, whenever a nation was about to enter into a catastrophic moment, prophets came up and gave direction, gave the word of God and said, thus saith the Lord. There is no way you can separate the state from the church. But what we are talking about here, and this should be very clear, is indecency on church altars. How do our politicians behave? The truth of the matter is, the Bible says, give honor to whomsoever honor is due. When politicians come to our churches, we recognize them, especially those that are not members of that congregation. For example, if the president today visited our church, honestly speaking, it will be unfair for me to assume that the head of state has not come to worship with us in church. We'll give him the respect he deserves as a leader by recognizing him. Now, this is where the problem is, Fred. When we invite them to greet the congregation, what do you see thereafter? Indecency. You see political contests. You see hate speech. You see um, uh, name calling, etc. And this desecrates the altars desecrates the place of worship. And if you add very clearly at Bishop Olesa Bigt and the leaders who have spoken, including my own chairman in the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya, Dr. Oginde, the point over here, how do politicians behave when they are given the opportunity to greet congregants? That's where the problem is. Now, we are not saying we should not have Daktari. politicians come to worship with us. Daktari. But whenever they are given the opportunity to yes. say something, yes. if I can finish, Fred, yes. whenever they're given the opportunity uh, to say something, it is important for them to be decent and at the same time to honor the culture and the traditions of that church. That's where the problem is. Thank you. Thank you, Daktari. 
who has failed? Daktari is saying very well that yes, we cannot be able to separate the two, but we have to give honor to whom it deserves. The president is in your congregation, SDA, Nairobi Central, and you have called him to speak, and then he utters words that you deem are not fit for the church. Who has failed? Before I come to um, who has failed, l let me just uh, mention something about uh, what Bishop has said um, mm. uh, in a way to bring a, a, little of a, a different perspective of this. Yes. Uh, I see that uh, there, is a, there is a clear distinction. There's a, th there's a path of separation between the state and the church. Um, I mean, the, the, the Bible is very clear. We, we have what's called the, the doctrine of separation. Of right, right, right from the story of creation, you know, God comes and begins separating light from darkness. And it's been made through the scripture. Um, when you come to the Old Testament, uh, where, where, where our bishop was talking from, and we look at, you know, it's God actually who you know, introduced the, 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 the church and the state within the nation of Israel, where we have the prophets uh, and we, we have the kings, you know, the, we, the, the, the sanctuary ministries of the priests and, and we have the, the, the kingship ministry. Mm. This was, um, you know, done by God himself. But when you look, go through the scripture, you see a very clear distinction between the church and the, the government, state and the government of, the, of the day. And in and, and, and a contradiction or, or assumption of, of feeling that there's no difference. I, I'll give an example here quickly. Uh, of, of a king called Uriah. And um, he, he, he thought there's no difference. And actually walked into the church to, 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 to serve in the church, to do a ministry of the priest. And was struck, you know, uh, by leprosy, by God. It, meaning th th there's a path <laughs> of separation. Are you telling a politician they can be struck? <laughs> oh, yes. Wait, wait, let, 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 let me say here, um, a friend, I, I think where we are sitting today, yes. we have to make the nation understand. And, and I think that's why you, you kept on asking us, where have you been? But this is how we speak. And at times, you know, people take lightly. Uh, for a nation like Kenya, which believes in God, we must allow God to be God and man to be man. So this, this, this path, you know, the, 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 it's, it, there should be this separation so vivid to everyone so that now we, we appreciate that whereas the church exists within the big society, the Bible teaches uh, believers that the church is the light, and the pastor mentioned it, the church is the light. Uh, if, meaning, if, if, if the church is the light, and I agree with you, the church is the light, yes. But we have seen, not once, not twice, over and over again, our politicians standing on the pulpit and spitting words. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. And I asked you, who has failed? I'm coming to that. that because it's it been the church. That, as, as I said, before I come to who has failed, let, let yes. me just shed light on this one. Yes. So that I, I want people to know that there is a clear distinction between the state and the church. Okay. Now, having seen that, I was, I'll say the church has failed. In what manner? Uh, that some of us clergy have failed to see this distinction between the church and the state. Now, when you fail to see that, what pastor was calling the salt of the world, of mm. course, in the book of Matthew, mm. uh, and the light of the world, doesn't make any sense. We are the salt to mean um, um, the world should be able to come to us to seek for, you know, we are the preservers of morals and spiritual life of, of, of a nation. So if we mingle with the world, if we mingle with the nation, like we are equals with the nation, then we are losing our ability to preserve. So that now the, the, the president here and the deputy president and any mm -hmm. other politician in this country yes. should uh, view the church as, as, a, as, as a refuge. You know, uh, you, you see now they've suddenly come into church. Uh, um, uh, you, you mentioned the influx is high, very high. Very high. You, you mentioned when, yes. when, when the president and the, the deputy won the, 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 you know, the elections, yes. they came to church to be prayed for. You see, how I look at it, every politician should be able to come to church, whether they win or lose. But if we have given some precedence on some particular um, politicians, yes. now if the other you know, party is going to lose, where are they going to go? Okay. So the okay. church should always remain here, mm. so that every whether you win or you lose, you, you still, come to, you the still church. come to church. This is what uh, uh, Ole Sapit, that is uh, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church, had to say. And he's the one who started this whole conversation. This is what he had to say. The church is becoming now the battleground for political expediency. 
and the church is no longer identified as a place of worship, nimepiga marufuku wa nasiasa kutukumusa ndani ya kanisa anglikana. <laughs> He's being supported in this studio. <laughs> but ask you this, uh, yes, before yes, I yes. got to Gabriel. Yes, sir. In the 90s when we were growing up, mm -hmm. during the clamor of multi-partisan, mm -hmm. politicians, yes, they were at the forefront, mm -hmm. but also the church, the likes of Reverend Timothy Njoya, mm -hmm. the likes of Muge, Bishop Muge. These are the people we used to see at the forefront fighting for multipartism. Mm -hmm. Why are then? And the pastor is saying, yes, yes, we should be reconciling everyone. Why are we not allowing the church then to play politics and to guide the country rather than what the politicians are telling us? Uh, Fred, I would, um, I'd maybe correct you. Uh, in the church, we don't play politics per se. Then guide us. The thing is, um, I will remind you of the late uh, President Moy. There's something that he used to say, value the place of prayer. Value. You know, the meaning of value is that you've given regard to that place. Scripture says in uh, Proverbs 8, 32, the scripture is saying, now then my children, listen to me, blessed are those who keep my ways. And not just keeping my ways, he say, hear instruction and be wise, do not regard, disregard it. The thing is, President Moy was just trying to put it out here that the altar is not a social place. It's not a place to, you know, become popular or something. So I think and I believe that this generation, they have thrown away the towel and they have thrown away the intimacy with God. Because I can tell you, if a governor would walk into if, church. If, uh, uh, let me cut you short just a bit. You say this generation. Includes the pastors of this generation then. Look at this. There was someone going there. Oh, right or wrong? We, 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 let me not answer that. Let me answer it. Okay? Yes. Just in a few. Yes. We have, let's say, for example, uh, we have the governors. Uh, leave alone the president. We have our governors who are uh, machinani. They get into church. What do they do? They do politics there. But at the end of the day, look at this. These are the people that voted for them. So the thing is, when you value the place of prayer, then your politics are different. So in as much as we're saying the church has failed, mm. the church has failed, the mm. church has failed, you guys want us to say, yes, we have failed. But I can tell you, we have not failed. When you are talking about COVID-19, leave alone the politics. You came to us. You told us, tell your people to do this. Tell your people to do this. You even increase some of the, uh, the regulations and you are giving us. There were things that we are supposed to do as clergy, and we did them. So how come that this other side of the politician, we are thinking that the church has failed? We have not failed. I can tell you the person where they expect there is original, they are good pastors. We have and there are some bad pastors. I don't want to Just like that. they are fake and original pastors. Let me go to Gabriel. That. Gabriel. You would say that, but they are. They, they are. They are. Yeah. They, are. Yeah. they are crooks. Yeah. They are crooks, yeah. Yeah. They are crooks yeah. in yeah. church. Because I'm being told we don't have a lot of time, and I right. want Gabriel right. to speak right. on this. Mm -hmm. Gabriel, let me point for you a picture. Mm -hmm. The president has gone to the table. It comes from. Mm -hmm. And we have said, yes, he himself is saying it's okay, we can not politic in charge, it's okay, he goes to church, blah, 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 blah. Now he has gone to Turnbull. And the people there supported him 100%. Every person in that congregation supported him 100%. And then the pastor has said, this is ACK Anglican Church. And the pastor has said, Mchugajuetu Mkubwa, Akbishop Ansima, where's Yongea? And the people start saying he must speak. Mm -hmm. What are we going? Is, uh, is it that anarchy that we are seeing? It's not anarchy. And I think, Fred, what the big mistake you may be doing mm -hmm. is thinking that the entire church is the same. Mm -hmm. Right now, you have the Anglican and the Catholics who have pronounced themselves that they don't want politics in churches. Mm -hmm. The evangelicals and the Pentecostals, most of them may not sway with that agreement. They are because here. They will yeah, tell yeah, us. No, no, no. <laughs> and, yeah, and it's a fact. They will tell you. Yes. Because you may have a string of churches which belong to one denomination, like you can have where Dr. Omai comes from, the Redeemed Gospel Church. They have a leadership that can say, all our churches under this group, we will have this as our core, you know, and this is where this fact will be. We won't allow this. They have a manifesto, not a manifesto, they have- The they mandate have, to say- they, they have principles. They yes. have a guiding principle. They have a policy or yes. whatever you call it. 
And then you have what I call the moms and pops churches. Me and you woke up and we desire, well, let's start a church. That church will be run by our own flesh rules, and blood, our own rules. So if which politician X Y Z comes to a church, will give them. It's run by our own. So you must differentiate, seriously differentiate between the churches that you're talking about. Now, there's one thing that you said, which I do not want. I really hope it's not get lost to tenants. Yes. You brought two people, even though you didn't go for the people who really socio engineered our democracy. But you started very well. Fred, you talked about the late 80s coming to the 90s. You talked about the likes of Bishop Muge. You talked about Reverend Timothy Njoya. Who yes. can forget the Rungus he was beaten? You yes. talked about David Gitare. Yes. Add more and talk about the Dingi Monanzi. Dingi, the yes, Bishop. absolutely. These are people who fought a republic. Bitterly. An entire republic. They are part and parcel of the vanguards who pushed for this space that we enjoy. That we can talk about politics, we can talk about the separation of church and state without hearing a sudden knock. That Fred, myself, and these two persons. Oh, yes, oh, yes, you oh yes, yes, yes. So you had, you had people who saw the church as a standard towards realizing accountability through pushing government to change the way of governance. And they did, and they succeeded. So that is what we are talking about. And you know that I have two great pastors here, and I have Bishop on the line. I think, I beg them, I request, I beseech them. Mm. Look within yourselves to push the church to reclaim her position that was the moral gatekeeper. Mm. That leadership would listen to you. All right? When you spoke, you spoke in oneness that the church has said. Coming to the separation of church and faith, they... You may, you, you may really go about in circles, but yes. the truth of the matter is, yes. if I was in the church, I would actually want there to be separation because the last thing you want is the church to be controlled by the state. It's dangerous. All right? It's actually very... You've heard tales of Cory Ten Boom and what have you. Absolutely. You know? That is what you do not want. But at the same time, the church and the government look at things in two different... As a government expert, I'll tell you, and I'm liking that these two gentlemen are here, they'll tell you, the way the church looks at things, they look at the popular evil of what is right and what is wrong. The government, through governance, looks at things from a legal and uh, guilty, legal or non-legal yeah. point of view. That is why, in certain jurisdictions, abortion is legal. It is okay. But in many churches, it is a practice. It's a no -no. That is a no-no. So there is no way you can hold on to saying that, you know, the way we believe in Kenya, that, the, the, that God, money, the church, and uh, ethnicity are inseparable. Okay. No. Okay. The church must always, Fred, must always exercise mm. the highest wisdom as proof that the owner of the universe is resident within the church. Thank you, Gabriel. Now, Bishop Omai, from here... I, 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 we have had this conversation and we don't have a lot of time and I'll give you two minutes to say this. What are we going to see? Are we going to see a total blackout? And um, I, I want you to speak as the head of the Redeemed Church. Are we going to see a total blackout of politicians standing on the podium and telling them you're not going to speak? Or are we going to tell them this is what you're going to say and if you go beyond this, we cut you short? Yeah, um, thank you. I, I think I've listened to um, Gabriel, and um, I love the last part of what he said about the church reclaiming our position. When we talk about reclaiming our position, we are simply talking about taking our place, uh, playing our roles and uh, our responsibilities as we should. But I can tell you something, there will be no total blackout as such, but what you are going to see is the management of the altars and the places of worship. Church leaders are going to manage the pulpits. They're going to manage uh, the place of worship and not allow politicians uh, to uh, take the space that we are supposed to use uh, in worship and also in teaching and uh, ministering to the congregation that come to church to worship. So the total blackout over here, I think what if I'm hearing you is not allow them to greet the congregation, but through the capacity building, 
uh, to help some of our pastors who may not know how to manage uh, the places of worship or altars, uh, you will see a different trajectory, not as it has been. We are talking about capacity building, teaching our church leaders and ensuring they know how to manage politicians whenever they come to church. Thank you, Either Dr. They speak outside the church or do their own, you know, have their own meetings outside, outside the precincts of the church as it was before. All right. Let me say something that... Uh, oh, me allow me to cut you short because I want to give these people, these great people, at least a minute for them to just say kwaheri. Allow me to. Nitashukuru sana mchungaji, if you allow me. Thank you very much. And what me, uh, he has allowed me. Now, what are we going to do to these churches that Gabriel talked about? The churches that Niamami Nadadi, you know those churches, and we have seen them, they're in this town. What are we going to do to, do to those churches? As church leaders, what are you people going to do? Uh, well, let, let, let me see here. Um, and I'll give you a minute. Allow me to give you a minute. You, you, you see, it, it really brought it out that, yes. that, that, you know, we have the mainstream churches and we have, you know, uh, like, like we can call them private individual, uh, you know, enterprises. Yes. If you can call them that way. Pastor Nganga, the other they was calling the viewers you call. But, but the, the point is here. The point is here. Where yes. I come from, where yes. I come yes. from, and allow me to say this, where I come yes. from as, a, as a, a, an SGA member, Adventist Church, uh, um, practice, mm -hmm. we don't allow politics in church. I, in fact, you know, they, all this noise, we are wondering what is happening. Because you've never had the conversation we, that some it, politicians have come to church. In, and anyone coming to our church, that yes. the church, they mm. come to worship. And what we do as clergy, we, if we invite the president or the deputy president or the honorable, the other day I hosted the, uh, the, the, the honorable uh, prime minister, uh, Raida. Yes. Yes. And, and when we come, we give them a brief. You, you give them a brief. Yes. You have come to worship. Yes. Or it's you're attending the funeral service here. Yes. Speak to the family. Yes. Consult the family. And they respect Beyond us. The, and they respect. And yeah. they can hear the voice. Yes. Uh, Pastor Nathan. Yes, 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 sir. In one minute. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. the DP comes to your church. Yes, sir. And he's coming for a fundraising. Mm -hmm. Are you going to tell him no? Hiyo pesaya poleo. Or the Raila Odinga will say are you going to do that at, at, at your church? Um, let me say this. Huh? It's, first of all, it's not my church. It's a church of Christ. Yes. The description of church is we actually a body of Christ. This other thing that surrounds us in terms of uh, we are having a rambis, we're having yes. all this stuff, yes. Yes. and they're coming in. I will talk like the way Pastor said. He's coming in as a, as a member. But the thing is, because he owns an office, I have to respect that office. That office. Because at the end of the day, I am a citizen. Oh, Scripture oh, says, oh, oh, please allow me to just cut because my director is telling me that I cut on air. Right. <laughs> right, right. in, in 30 seconds, what, what are we seeing in this country? Where mm -hmm. are we headed? Mm -hmm. well, well, I think we are heading in the right direction. Are in we? so many things. In yes. so many things, apart from the cohesion that yes. we must have in yes. the next one and a half yes, years. Yes, yes. Yes. I believe. I believe God loves this country so much. I think yes. we are heading in the right places. Mm. And many major centers of doom, I don't think that realization will come to pass. But the thing that we are ending about church is it, 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 it is that me and you will, and the pastors here will agree with me, it would be very hard for them to make a distinction between a politician and a church member. Yes. Half of these politicians are church members. In a Absolutely. Church. So when will you make that distinction that, oh, Jamaa, do I give him a mic? And who names our Kanisa? It's going to be very hard. Thank you, Gabriel. Bishop Doctor. Kefao Mai from the Redeemed Gospel Church. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Peter Nyaga. Pastor Peter Nyaga, beg your pardon. Nairobi Central SGA Church. Thank you, Pastor Nathan Kiama from Great Light Center from Langata. We appreciate you. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. And of course, Gabriel, thank you for having Fred, time thanks for, for us. Thanks for having us. Asante Nisana. Thank you, thank so, you, thank you, the sir. views described on this show are strictly <laughs> individual views and do not portray the views of Switch TV Kenya. From myself and my, <laughs> my interpreters, do have yourself a good night and thank you for watching Tipping Point.